Is anyone here? You should be here, okay? We, we already uh, delayed by, by half an hour. Right, so let's continue from where we left off. Just a quick recap from what you had many, many weeks ago. Do you remember? Don't remember? Not really. Good. Very honest. <laughs> very, very honest. Okay. Um, so before your break, we learned about signal transduction. Okay. So plants live in environment. It can be indoor environment, outdoor environment, but the point is it is in environment. So surrounding plants, there are many um, factors that can influence its growth, you know, its responses, how, how, whether it's going to flower or not, whether it's going to go longer or shorter, and so on. So this, what we call as um, abiotic factors, okay, non-living factors, things like light, wind, temperature, movement, you know, like the wind, remember? Um, I think there was a picture when the tree is growing by the seashore. It's kind of, you know, like that. <laughs> right. So, um, even though in, in the environment, there are many factors that can influence plant growth, we are going to focus on just one factor, namely light, okay? Because many times, um, regular agricultural inputs, such as water, fertilizer, even without going to school, people know to give these to plant, right? You, if you, if you, if you look at your, your ama and your ako 50, 70 years ago, did they go to UPM to grow vegetable at home? The choice comes still there, right? However, when things get not optimal, despite of their efforts in giving all this, you know, extra water, extra fertilizer, and so on, we know there, there is something more to it, okay? And more often than not, it is usually related to light, okay? So have this mindset away that light is only things to consider when you grow your vegetables or plants indoor. If you grow it outside, you don't have to worry about it. That is incorrect, okay? I know in, in our um, age, time and era now, everything is very urban. People like to grow indoor, you know, grow indoor, stay indoor, die indoor, everything indoor. Even though that's the case now, while you are in nature, outside, light still plays important roles, okay? Because remember, light has properties, quantity and quality. And these two must be perceived by the plant in adequate amount for it to function properly, right? So that's what we're going to look at today. Hence the, the, the title for the chapter, Signals from Sunlight. So you're going to, um, did anybody have a read ahead about this? Anybody? No. Little bit. <coughs> what, 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 what did you understand? Fort, fort, phytochrome. Phytochrome. Yeah, and how it's like from hard right? Mm hmm. Okay. From red light, when it absorbs the sunlight, and it becomes hard right. But still, there's some terms and some part I'm not to understand. Okay. All right. Not to worry. That, that's good. Okay. This is the reason I give the copy to you ahead of time so that you can scan it. It is not expected for you to understand everything, but 
the moment you have to look at it two, three, four, five times, your brain will start to make neurons and connections. Okay? Don't think that because, oh, I'm older now. I cannot learn as fast as 10 years ago. Hey, I'm even older. All right? Um, so it's, a, it's about photoreceptors. This chapter is all about. So you're going to have a look like some weird terminologies. Well, um, if you, I mean, like most of the time you can Google these terminologies. But if you still don't understand, just you can just um, ask me. For example, like the what 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 seems weird there? Photoblasty. What's photoblasty? Seeds that require light to germinate. Okay, not all seeds require light to germinate. You put a uh, mung bean in the fridge. Can it germinate or not? You still you get your tauge, right? What's tauge in English? Sprouts. Bean sprout. Right? Okay. So, the concept of photoreceptor. You know, I kind of like this, this topic because it, it reminds you, you have things very much in common with plants, especially when it comes to light. Okay? What's that? Eyeball. Do you have eyeballs? Now I want to ask this side. Do you have eyeballs? Oh, let's go on. What happened to her? The girls with that chromosome. What happened to your friend? Maybe on the way. It's, it's, it's already what time now? Hey, we already start a bit delayed. Ask her. Run. Run. <clears throat> What's the function of I? Receive the light. To receive the light. My, friend, my hand cannot receive light. <laughs> um, maybe it's good for you to know that eyes, your eyes actually not really a separate organ. It, your eyes is actually your brain. Okay? It's part of the same organ. The thing is, due to evolution and stuff, this part of the brain kind of protruding out of the socket. Okay? It is part of the brain. So whatever light that comes towards your eyes, that actually goes straight to your brain. Because your eyes is your brain. It is connected. It's not like other organs. For example, like your hand. Huh, my boy. I will ask her again. Oh no, not this one. I want this one. <laughs> so your eyes <coughs> uh, is different. Even though we call it organ, right? Um, your, your sight, your sight organ. Your limbs, for example, like your foot, is it connected or not to your brain? Yes. Okay. How is it connected? By nerve system, right? So connected to various nerve system before it reaches your brain. So it has to go through this expressway in your body all the way to your brain. Okay? Even your muscle in your face that is close to your brain, still this tissue on your cheek, for example, it will be connected to the central nervous system before it can reach your head, your brain. It shows that it's not a direct connection. Okay? It's like the road from KL to Bangkok. Can you travel by land from KL to Bangkok? Can you arrive? Right, you can arrive, right? But can, can, can you go just straight without even stopping or changing road? Just straight line. Okay. So it's the same story for your other organs. It's not a direct connection to your brain. But your eyes, that's very direct. Because eyes is brain. So this is the cross-section of the eyeball. Okay. If you're not familiar, 
you know one thing about being being a um, plant scientist you need to know human biology as well and this is this is the um uh, the, kind of like the the the, the hard part <clears throat> well not so hard if you read about it uh, repeatedly so this is your eyeball uh, i know it hasn't got any label to it what's this membrane, membrane. that's your eye lens that's your iris you know the, the color bits of your eyes? Anybody got Sharingan eyes? That's your iris. So your eyes have this structure. It will allow the light to pass through because this lens here is transparent. What I want you to pay attention is to this tissue here, this yellow tissue here. This yellow tissue at the back of your eye, it's called retina, okay? In the retina, there are two cells embedded in retina called the cone cell and the root cells okay so these two cells are the cells that are responsible to give you colored vision not only vision colored vision because <coughs> rod cells is to perceive the general shape monochrome the figure of it be circle square and so on and whether it's it's brighter or less bright dimmer and so on while the uh, cone cell it's the rgb red green blue which is the primary color sensor so these sensors will be um sitting in the retina waiting for the light to come in Whatever that you see now, this door, your friend, is actually the result of light reflected to the eyes, okay? And since the amount of photon or light particles that get reflected and arrives on the surface of retina is different, okay, depending on the wavelength and so on, this will create different electricity signals impulses and guess what this electricity will go straight to your brain it's not like it's got a mirror down back here no no mirror the cells the cone and root cells will convert again the transduce change the light signals into electrical signals then into imaging in your head okay so that's how you get the vision. Now comes the question, can plants see? No. So how come it knows to grow up? How comes it knows that it is night? How comes it knows it is day? It is raining. It is you. Uh. Signals? What signal? Oh, what? <laughs> well, you don't have a biotic a biotic signal around you. You have winds around you, right? Will your eyes perceive the wind signals? You know, turn on the fan. Uh, is that useful for your eyes? So, this is, this is what I want you to, to appreciate a bit more. So, your eyes is located in your eye socket, right? So, that is defined as your human vis vision. Plants, to some degree, have these photoreceptors as well. But, rather than located in one specific area, socket like your eyes, it is scattered in the cells. So you can think of your, your, your plant, your little plant, have many, many eyes. So it can know the 3D world around it by having this concept. Eyeball, 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 eyeball. I'm thinking of a Naruto monster that got so many eyeballs around the body. There, there is a name for it. Well, <laughs> All right. Okay. 
So this is this is all to lead to the understanding of photomorphogenesis. Your plants, you know that it can perceive light, have the photoreceptor, and to, to give reactions, right? But not to read books, to go to university. You have your vision. Why do you need your vision? Why do you need your vision? Do you have vision? Yeah. Okay, why do you need your vision? Your eyesight. Why do you need your eyesight? To see, to see, to see, and to see, yeah, your eyesight. Why do you need that? Cannot think of one. Do you have eyesight, vision? Okay, yeah, I know you need to see. Why do you need to see? Because I only can see other things can reflect to me the, the, the information. <clears throat> you, need, you need your eyesight because you need to move, you need to read, you need to learn, you need to go to somewhere. To get a signal. To get signal, okay. Such as the plant gets signal from the about its environment. All right, okay. So that you can interact with your environment. Which is correct. Okay? You see your friend, then you go away. Right. Yeah. You you keep on scrolling your phone while I'm teaching. Oh, there's something going on at IOI. Then you go soon. Free, free, free. What's the name of that sushi thing? Sushi Shiro? Shiro. Ah, sushi Shiro. One sushi, one ringgit. You go very soon because you want to eat 20. So it's, it's for you to, to interact with the environment, okay? So, but for plants, plants do not have to learn, do not to go somewhere. They just need this as a signal to do this. Photomorphogenesis. It, it means um, the plants develop and change its developmental course depending on the light situation that it receives, okay? Because the light that the plant receives, it's not going to be consistent. It's going to change, okay? This is even more if the plant is growing in the four-season country, right? Throughout the year, the, the light is going to change. So why this is important? So light will determine how the leaf develops, whether the plant is going to elongate or become a dwarf in stature. When is it going to be flowering for the flowering plants? Not all plants are flowering, okay? Your fern is not flowering, right? And also, for the seeds, some plants require light to um, germinate. Not all seeds, some seeds, okay? Um, mung bean doesn't require light, but the, um, your uh, laptuka sativa, your, your salad plant, that require a bit, a bit of light, right? Right. So, pay attention to the image. So you have two plants here. One is germinating in a dark condition, and one is giving, being given the regular lighting condition. What can you see? You see? What happened to the dark seedling? What does it look like? yellowish white okay so it looks pale okay so in science this pale we call etiolated meaning that it um the pigments is not fully developed in this case it's chlorophyll right so for the light grown seedlings what color does it look like Green, right? So, what's the quick conclusion that you can make from here? What can you infer from this simple observation? Light is required for what now? Huh? 
So with light, green, in the dark, it's pale. So I think, so, what can you infer quickly? Why is it green? Due to what? Chlorophyll. Why is it pale? It's not like no chloro. Actually, chlorophyll is always there. It's it's either mature or not. Okay, it's like everybody has a potential to go to prison. Either you go in or not, right? Everybody got potential, right? So um, the chlorophyll kind of not happening. So from this thing, you can make a quick inference. You can infer light promote. Promote chlorophyll biosynthesis. See, you you already have one knowledge from here, just from this observation. Without light, chlorophyll is not going to properly develop. Even though all this life you have known that oh chlorophyll, it's green. You need nitrogen for it. You need urea for it. No nitrogen, no chlorophyll. That is correct. That is the, the common knowledge that you have. But there is something more to it. You can give all the nitrogen that Petronas can give to you. But if you have your seedlings in the dark, is it going to be green or pale? Still pale. Yeah. It doesn't matter if your, your, your father's own Petronas even. Okay, so this is this is something that um, I would like to highlight because I've, I've seen that many many students, you know, you 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 have been tightly bound to this conventional agriculture sense, you know, fertilizer, pest control, soil, water. People tend to neglect about light. It's very important. You can provide all the resources, but without light not gonna happen okay you can have all the infrastructure in this class you have uh, your teacher you have your laptop you have your lab operators you have your microscope you have internet you have laptop you have 3d hologram everything perfect place to learn right close your eye can you learn see is this can you can because you still got your ears. So when you take these photoreceptors out of the equation, other things almost not going to the fullest of potential. All right. So they, they are like, you know, our, our country politics now, one, this small party kind of called the, the kingmaker. Without it, nothing going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. That's called budget bagus. Okay. Don't be that. Okay. Um, so this thing, when when the seedlings experiencing this, growing in the dark, there is a special word for it. We call it scotomorphogenesis. Scoto it means dark. Right? Okay. Then what else? Oh, maybe you, I should have make, made that bigger. Okay, this is actually the tip of a seedling of a, a barley, okay, hodium. You can see that for this seedling tip, from the base all the way to the top, you can find chloroplast. However, the structure of the chloroplast is of different phase. You can see that the young cells at the bottom have a rather primitive chloroplast, underdeveloped chloroplast. It is, it is chloroplast. It's called chloroplastic. Okay? I'm not going to go into deeper about the chloroplast uh, uh, biosynthesis, but it's good you to know that it all starts from a meristem cell like this, meristematic cell that we call a plastic. 
Okay, plastid means any uh, organelle, any structure in the cells that can either synthesize or store food. Okay, or they can do both. Okay, that's why nuclear, nucleus, might uh, do, is not called plastid because nucleus can nucleus make food? What nucleus do? What nucleus do? Nucleus in your cell. What does it do? Just sit there looking pretty. What does a nuclear do? What? It, it stores your genomic information. Okay? Right. So, there are a number of different plastids in the cells. It's even more in the, in the plant cell. You've got your regular chloroplast, myeloplast, you know, etioplast, and so on. This, this thing here is green due to chloroplast, right? Because you've got chloroplast, you've got chloroplast. Here, because chloroplast is underdeveloped. Underdeveloped chloroplast for this uh, dark pill, we call it etioplast. Look at this color. This is etioplast. Okay. And also chromaplast. Chromaplast because it contains pigment. Okay. Like the beta carotene, your carrot. Why do you think your carrot looks orange? Chromoplast. Right? Okay. So as the seedlings get to the tip, you can see that the plastic it's more developed. From from pro plastic here, now it has become etioplast. Even though etioplast is not really a chloroplast, but it is more developed compared to the pro plastic. Okay? So um, you can see these different levels of um, chloroplast phase. And this is the, the name of it, okay? I just want you to, to show. For example, maybe you cannot see here. I'll just uh, show you. <clears throat> so this here, right down here, this is called the proplastid here. Okay? So the reason this is put next to this, so that you know this here, what is the name? Okay? Right. Um, proplastid. There is like a streak here. So this here, that is the structure, okay? Just so that you know. So eventually, you will get your chloroplast when everything is developed properly under light. So this is the final structure of it. But in order to reach here, there are many different structures. And it cannot arrive here without light. As simple as that, right? So, what what happens exactly? Why 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 could, why why this is important? So, um, for one reason, when it comes to biosynthesis of anything, whether it's a drug organelle or a compound like chlorophyll, there are many steps. Okay, for the formation of chlorophyll here, okay, chlorophyllite here, which eventually become the chlorophyll, you will see that in one of the steps, light is required. It can be 30 steps. Maybe step number 15, you need light. Without it, the final product cannot happen. Okay, so that is the basic understanding of why light is required for things to happen. Does it, is it, is it, is it required for the whole time? Maybe not. All right, but it's just to give the signal to the plant, okay, okay, I know, this, 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 this thing, this thing is present now, I can proceed. All right, so for, for the image here, you, <coughs> you can see that um, there is two enzymes. Okay, we are interested with this left side here. 
okay? Because we are dealing with gymnosperm and angiosperm. I hope you know what that means, gymnosperm and angiosperm. <coughs> so for this um, gymnosperm and angiosperm, the enzyme responsible is POR, okay? The POR enzyme, but for other organism that also have chlor uh, chlorophyll, plants is not the only organism that have chlorophyll, okay? There are other uh, beings that have chlorophyll, like the cyanobacteria, algae, uh, and so on. They, they use different set of enzyme called um, LIPO. LI stands for light independent, all right? <clears throat> so, can you give just about anything, light? There are so many colors of light, right? How many colors of light? Seven. 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 Do you have white color in your seven color? So, what is number eight? Your, I do not know exactly how many. I think our eyes can, it depends on the individual. It's genetic, actually. Some people, they, they can see more colors. Yeah. In fact, if you have this condition, you don't, you, when, whenever um, there's some music around, stop hearing the music, you are seeing colors. I think maybe I, 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 I said it wrong. Synesthesia. This these people when you have this condition, when they hear sounds, if you hear sound, you want to dance to it. They hear sounds, they see colors coming. Okay, synesthesia. Is that correct? Uh, can you double check the, um, yeah. Is that correct? Okay, that's good. At least I'm not scamming you. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> yeah. So I don't want to really say how many colors are present in nature. Okay. But it's good to know at least we all agree seven or eight, if you want to include. Or maybe you can say, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Black. Okay, fine. Yeah, we, 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 we call it nine colors uh, black, white, and rainbow. Uh, you get this. So all of these colors that your eyes can see, your eyes cannot see, will be perceived by the plants differently by different photoreceptors. Unlike your eyes. Your eyes just receive whatever sunshine color coming to it. Okay? And then make an image out of it. But for plants, for any event to happen, like the photomorphogenesis, the light, the right light color need to arrive at the photoreceptor, okay? So that's why I have it here. So this is the full spectrum of the light that you can see. You can see that these photoreceptors, such as the phytochromes, cryptochromes, and phototropins, they are sensitive to different light. For example, if the phytochrome receives uh, the green light, nothing much can ha happen to it, right? <clears throat> so, it seems that phytochrome likes to receive the red and far red light. So here comes the question. Um, oops, what was it? Was it this? Yeah. Oh, no, no, this is from old type. You can ignore this. Um, I was uh, trying to remind where to look at later. So phytochrome is one of the photoreceptors in the plant, just like your cone and rod cells in your eyes. Okay? And phytochrome is sensitive to light. Is the phytochrome the one doing all the works later when it receives the light? No, it receives the light and it will cause certain reactions to happen. 
And also it only needs to receive a small amount of light and then it can amplify things to happen, right? <clears throat> so it will answer this question to the plant. Kind of beg you to answer this question. Can plant think? Do, do plants have thoughts? Can the plants thinking? Look at the question. Don't you think the plants might be asking this question? Am I in the light? Do I have competitors? Is it time to flower? Plant, is it living or dead? Living. Are you living or dead? Are you thinking or not? Yes. No. <laughs> yes. So the plants thinking or not? Yes. Okay, I just want to say, who, who says plant is not thinking? One, two, three, four. Okay, four. Who says plants are thinking? Six, seven. So those on the fence? <laughs> it's, it's kind of hard to answer that question, actually. Okay? It's kind of hard. It, it's one of the question that plant scientists still do not have the, the, the answer. They are they're kind of inviting physicists to help to answer the question whether plants have thoughts or not. Okay? Or is it just kind of like a chain of reactions? When things happen, it will lead to other things happen. Since it has light and then this thing will happen to the plant. Rather than the plant see, oh, this is light, okay, let's do this. It cannot make this. So the, this is the word. Conscious or aware. Okay. I would say that yes and no. Yeah, yes and no. Because to, to some to some degree, plants can um, react with the environment. Okay, it has to make decision. Okay, there are many signals coming toward the plant, and now the plant needs to do some kind of computation. What is the final decision going to be like? Should I flower or should I stop? So this decision forming, to me, if you ask me, I'll say that that is considered as thinking, computational. It computes. Okay. But there are many things. The plant just simply responds to the environment. Okay? For, 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 for example, you, you, you have two beakers of color. You have your um, blue beakers. You have your yellow beakers. You mix it. What's going to happen? It becomes green, right? So this, this, this green color, does it, can it think to make itself green? Or it, does it just react to the environment changes? Yeah, it just react to whatever happening, right? Yeah. So I think plus is a combination of both. Yeah. Just, just, just like you. Just, just, just like your, your, your environment. Okay. For, for example, if, if, if you, if you have, your hand, if you, you have, you, you use your hand, right? Do you take a pen? Then you scribble on your hand. Now your skin what color? Black. Black. So your skin, is it black because it decides to look black or it just receives whatever environment coming to it? Right. This, this doesn't require a uh, decision, right? But my, my, my hand, is it living or not? You see? So it's, it's kind of hard to answer that question. It's a combination of both. Interactions and obvious apparent uh, conscious or awareness okay it's aware not aware mm -hmm. right so let's see how plants answer this question using phytochrome this is a function of phytochrome it will answer hmm am i in the light do i have competitors or is it time to flower phytochrome what does it look like to be honest 
I don't think scientists have the actual picture of fighter crow. You know? The beauty of a fighter crow. No. It's just so far as a model. Okay? But from the model, this is what fighter crow should look like. Okay? <clears throat> so, functional fighter crow, there's a two identical protein and in each of this protein, you have three structures here, okay? So, something like this. Okay, so there is a, so there is a region here. There is a region here. There is a region here. So, there's a two region and this thing becomes two times. So this region here is called chromophore. Chromophore. This is the photoreceptor part. Photoreceptor part. And this is the kinase reaction. Chromophore is the part that gives the color to this pigment. Like the beta carotene in your into your eyes. What is the color of carotene? Orange, right? That orange due to this chromophore. Photoreceptor is the part that actually receives the light signals from the environment. Okay? And the kinase is the part that um, do this, this thing. Force, for relation. Force, for relation. Do you still remember what force, for relation mean? I know it has been like three weeks since we last talked about this. Adding of phosphate groups to other substance. Okay? Right. So, depending on the light coming to this um, photoreceptor, your um, phytochrome okay, can exist in two situations. It can be in the inactive form. And also the active form. Ooh, how does it do that? To become active, usually this is what we, we, we denoted, okay? P R P F R. Okay. To become active. It requires red light. Red light, the energy in it is very specific. It's about 650 nanometer. Okay. This is wavelength, okay? The lambda wavelength. You cannot see the red wave, but you can see the color, okay? Meaning that when in the dark, much of the phytochromes is in this state, much of it. P P R P R P R P R P R P R P R P R P R. As the sun comes along, many of these PR start to change into PFR, okay? And then, as the night comes, this PFR will start to change back to PR, the inactive form, to receive the infrared. Infrared is usually um, more than 720 nanometer, okay? For red, this kind of red, usually you can, um, if you are normal, you can't see it. But you can feel it in the form of heat. Alright? So, this is during the night. Or dark. This is during the day. Or bright. Now, correct your understanding before anybody gets even more wrong. Because I, I can see many people get this wrong very easily. Just because it is night, not it doesn't mean that all phytochromes in the form of PR. No. Some 
active form still present, but the ratio is much less. Okay, in I in both night and dark, both PR and PFR are present, but they are in different ratio, and this different ratio will determine how the plant respond. Okay, right. So this changing of uh, from one state active to inactive, this is what we call as isomerization. Isomerization. Okay. If you learn, if you remember from your organic chemistry, from the cis phase become the trans phase, it is still the same molecule. Okay. It's just the, the tip of the tail, it becomes the cis or trans. Okay? Isomer. It's the same. When you look at the mirror, you still see you. But you are... What happened to you in the mirror? What do you call it? Reflected. What do you call it? Mirror, lah. You are mirrored. You are you are the mirror. Left become right, right become left now. Okay, so it's the same story for this. Okay, so it has received this um, light and it becomes active. The moment it becomes active, or otherwise, this kinase will start to do the work. It will start to do the work. This kinase activity. Let me to show you. Yeah, this this kinase region. So this is the the, the cause of the reactions, right? You have your cytochromes on the surface of the plasma membrane. It's kind of embedded. It's not floating about. Okay, don't think of it, of it is floating about. Okay, the one floating about and daydreaming. That's you. This thing is embedded in the in, 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 in the uh, in the membrane. Okay, so it will will it leave the place or not to do the reaction? It will not. It will do this cascade of reaction, and then you will start to have your second messenger. Remember, you learned about the secondary messenger. What are the secondary messenger? Example. Yeah, it, it can be anything actually. It can be anything, right? Yeah, and then all the way to the nucleus, to inside gene expression, the activation of transcription factors and so on, right? But if this signal is not coming, that's why some genes are not active. That's why the chlorophyll is not greening. It stays white, okay? R remember this tail etiolated. Now you take these seedlings, you go to the light. When you put, you put the, uh, the seedling that way, this will happen and it will incite a new process called the etiolation because this thing is activated now when the etiolation has happened eventually you will get your chloroplast that's why this statement come along light promote chlorophyll biosynthesis okay but not just of any light the red light all right Okay. <clears throat> okay, look at this statement. A single phytochrome isomerization can trigger the production of hundreds of secondary messenger molecules. That's why I said it can amplify the signals that will be given rise to. It doesn't have to be like, oh, this we need like one million phytochrome. No. That doesn't doesn't need to happen. Okay. The phytochromes know how to amplify the signal by utilizing the secondary 
messenger molecule. This is why the second messenger molecule is very important. Okay. <coughs> Do you know the newscaster, news reader? When you turn on the TV? How many you have for what each television channel? At least two, right? Because one is lonely. Do you do you do you need more? There's only two person reading the news at the television station. But due to this amplification, spreading of the news, the whole 32 million population of Malaysia can know about the news as well. So you can think of the news reader, broadcaster is your phytochrome, and the 32 million population is the second messenger. Okay? Message to do what? Whatever the broadcaster tell them to do. Right? So that's the power of marketing. That's why during... Um, you know the tv3 news at 8 pm you you are watching very intensely your news oh okay okay parliament and so on oh budget oh i'm going to be rich soon uh, okay vivo 880 what the why this vivo come along because they know 32 million is watching right more message can reach in a short amount of time all right so that's the power of broadcasting all right Okay, so this is the story here. So from the etiolated seedlings, you can de-etiolate it by giving the red light. Okay, you want to convert the phytochrome from the inactive form to the active form. Right. <coughs> Look at this. But isn't it still right? red? This is red. That's my red. This is red. This is red. I mean, like, I don't care what the ampau red color is. I just want the money, right? Ampau is red, right? But you go to one auntie house, Ayi one, not so red because she's poor. The 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 second the second Ayi work at my bank got a brighter red ampau, but both of them give you twenty ringgit. Does it matter? Okay, so then why, why does it matter? It's a, a red now. It's still red. And if you look at the wavelength, right next to each other, red is red. Money is money. <laughs> so why does it matter now? Energy. Yes, yes. This, this thing here, this wavelength, the lambda here. See, the strike not coming out. But I, I really want to use red because I'm talking about the red now. Do you have more red? Uh, yay. This thing here. 600 nanometer. 720 nanometer. This is energy. Energy. The longer the wavelength, the lesser the energy. The shorter the wavelength, the higher the energy. Why? So you, you have two waves here. A and B. Which one has a longer wavelength? A or B? B, right. So let's say that this is second, this is zero, this is one, this is two, this is three. A is regarded as higher energy because it takes less time to complete one cycle. So this is one cycle of the wave. This is one cycle. Go up, down, and up again. So one cycle of A takes two seconds. For B, one cycle takes how long? Three seconds. So after one hour, who have more cycles? A or B? A. 
That's why A, even though it is short wavelength, short lambda wavelength, it has more energy because it can complete the wave cycles many times for a given time, for one time, compared to the longer wavelength. That's the only reason, okay? So, um, for the red part, that is actually also useful for photosynthesis, actually, this thing. Not only that, it's used by the phytochrome, but it is also the one used by the reaction center in photosystem too. If you remember the, your photosynthesis, photosynthesis, chloroplast, go deeper into the thylakoid membrane. On the membrane, you have your photosystem. Your photosystem has the reaction center, special chlorophyll A molecule, okay? So you have your reaction center, usually say six, P6 is 8O. So this is the RC, reaction center, special chlorophyll A. Okay, so this also require this light here. See, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a approaching, so it's 180. So when the photosynthesis get activated, phytochrome gets activated, whatever they want to do now kind of work synergistically. If phytochrome gets activated, but the photosynthesis is not happening, who's going to make sugar for the food and energy? Right? Yeah. It's pretty much like your, your news reader again. It keep on saying, okay, uh, go on, spend. We need to, uh, 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 you know, uh, reignite, rejuvenate the economy. They give money lah. <laughs> Telling the population to spending to promote economic growth, but you don't prom uh, give the budget to do it, it's kind of useless. So newscaster telling the population to spend so that the economy can grow. The other side of it, the government behind the scenes, they need to provide the budget, give brim and so on to the population so that the population receive the message to spend, have the money to spend. You see, so that's the story. Get activated, send the signals. Oh, okay, everything, we're ready to, to grow. Okay, let's grow. You are growing, what do you need to grow? Energy, right? So photosynthesis provide the energy. Uh, so that's why we use the red light here. Not we, the phytochrome, use the same red light. Okay, yeah. Right. So this is, uh, I think this is in somewhere in the book as well. Okay. So um, the effects of the red lights, okay. It can promote the germination, the etylation, and so on, depending on the plant group. Okay. Angiosperm is the, what, what, what are angiosperm? You know, I, I, there, there are some PhD students I cannot ask angiosperm, genosperm still do not know. Oh God. Enjoy sperm means what? Flowering. Yeka. 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 What? And gyo sperm. Gymno sperm. Sperm means it. And gyo means vessel. Gymno means naked. So, angiosperm are the plants that have fruits. Vessel, this vessel means fruit. The seeds are in enclosure, in a container, in a vessel. Rambutan, durian, and so on. All those are um, angiosperm. Gymnosperm, the seeds kind of expose, like the pine. You know, the Christmas tree. Anybody going back for Christmas? Yes. Yes. Uh, election, holiday. Deepavali, holiday. This Monday, the Sultan's birthday, holiday. My, my birthday, nobody wants a holiday. 
<laughs> pas pas tes already. <laughs> Oke. Okay. Right. So, um Teridophyte that is the fern, bryophyte that's the moss, lichen, lumot, you know the greeny green things on the floor that makes you slippery and and your friend laugh at the back? Yes. Bryophyte and this is a chlorophyte which is alga. Okay? So, they have phytochrome. Imagine this, different uh, section of plant or plant-like organism, but phytochrome is everywhere. So that's why it's very important and it takes a very long time to learn about phytochrome. Okay? Uh, here comes the question. What is the color of phytochrome? Somebody asked me before, but I, did, I didn't have this, this, this picture. What? Blue and green. So this here, on the left, this is the active form of this. The color, the inactive form. And on the right is the active form. What color is that? Blue and green. Blue and green. Hmm. Here go. Cyan and blue and green. On the... Anybody cannot see color? <laughs> Adam not here. I don't have to worry, right? One, one, one of my master student, uh, uh, he's a color blind. So like, you know, whenever I ask to make slides, everything yellow. All yellow. Uh, okay, on the left, what colors do you call that? Oh, by the way, this thing here, it's called, it's a name of it actually. So this is a extract. The solution extract, extract of phyt phytochrome. This container here, um, there's a name for that, QVET. QVET. Um, and then this thing, they put it into spectrophotometer. Spectrophotometer, it will um, put the laser in. So the laser will give you the absorbance uh, reading. All right? So on the left, it kind of like uh, yellowish green yellowish green and on the right it's about like a cyan cyan blue green kind of thing why that's the question now why it looks this color why why lose this color why the phytochrome extract lose this color it's very easy actually it's very easy and the answer is already on the board Huh? Why? The answer on the board, the answer on the screen. Why phytochrome solution is in this color? Yellowish green, green bluish. Why? You have your phytochrome, right? What does the phytochrome do? What does it do? What? Go to school? <laughs> you have your phytochrome. Light coming to it. What happened? It absorbed. It absorbed what? Uh, what light? Red light. That's the answer. It absorbed that light. No more red light. Phytochrome absorbed red. That's why you don't see red. The, the, the red has been absorbed. Whatever can, at the beginning, I just said to you, whatever you see, the what is the color that has been reflected to your cornea, to your eye, meaning that the color is not being used by anybody else. That's why you see the color. The reason the phytochrome solution extract, you see greenish, bluish. Or because these colors are the one phytochromes do not want. Reflect to your eyes. This is why. Uh, 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 men menthol lighting up already? Ah, uh, that's good. Huh. Okay, get it? Simple question. It's like very simple. Okay, let's do some experiment using this uh, lettuce uh, seed germination. Duh. 
Very little germination. Very little, but still germination. Why? Yeah. Actually, some some seeds they still have this um, PFR from mummy. They can, this can be in the body, and for some reason, this thing is not degraded. It's still in PFR form. So when it receives the water, it's just the germinate. Uh, we call it. There's a word for it actually. Seed vigor. When when the mummy is healthier, the baby is going to be vigorous. Okay, so that's that's why people are more into ensuring uh, seeds are of high quality, because healthy, vigorous seed will yield a very super seedling, big yield, and so on. Okay, so actually you can learn from this. So when you are pregnant, eat healthily. Okay. Don't care about you are craving. Stop eating that bakwa. That's not healthy. I know like you are craving, right? Is that healthy bakwa? Can you make it healthier? Can. How? Home. <laughs> if you if if you if you're pregnant, um, if you go to the checkup, doctor keep on giving folate, you know, giving folate all these uh, vitamins. It's actually to make you healthy first, not really for the baby directly. All right. So this concept is actually many um, developed countries are using. They take good care of the mom to be because they want to produce a healthy and strong population. Which is something that our country kind of there, but not so. Okay? Um, meaning that it's not only about during the pregnancy, they take good care. Even after the child is delivered. Um, because they want to prevent... Uh, that's a word for that. I know the Malay word for it because we use it to throw people. Uh, what's the science word for it? Uh, Malay is called uh, magoyan. You know, kumpuan belanak magoyan. That's a, a science word. Oh, I know. No. Postpartum depression. Postpartum depression. Yeah. <clears throat> so taking good care of the mom, so that the mom is not shaking the baby. Right. So that your baby is healthier, smarter, and that you will have a strong country population that's what developed countries are doing all right okay coming back to the letter c okay briefly you give the red light what happened you got the germination this right right here okay the the brighter red the richer ie give you that uncle Okay, but what if if you give the deeper red, the far red? Okay, you were happy go to the rich IE house, and then um, Amma said, uh, "Let's go to the next uh, second IE." Second IE was so poor, you know, no PS five, no Xbox, nothing. Eventually, the first day CNY already over. You go to bed, sad. That's what happened. Right? So, no germination. So, you can see that the ending here, as long as it is red light, doesn't matter. Because you need this form to be floating about abundantly in the cells to promote germination. As long as this is less, good to go. Is it? That's why it's so time. So tomorrow, I'm still trying to correct the mistake yesterday. Brought to the rich eye, poor eye, rich eye again. At the end, the poor eye still sad because now the fourth eye made you wash dishes at the kitchen. So the conclusion is, you are materialistic. You cannot live in poor condition. You will just make it life uh, so sad at the end of the day. So, the, the fourth deep red 
the forehead is actually the one determining whether the seed going to continue sleeping or will start to germinate right okay this is in the book i just put it here all right the summary of it okay so if you have trouble to germinate your seeds maybe your seeds actually needs um, this light activation okay don't don't germinate it in in the dark maybe put it at least by the window yeah that will do the trick okay so how does it work do you have two different photoreceptors or do you have one photoreceptor with two forms one photoreceptor with two forms this thing here it's the same guy due to this process what do you call isomerization okay i'll just just i just want to see okay this is the because of uh, the image just now so small so that's the uh so 650 660 that's about it all right i don't want to put 666 <laughs> right okay yeah this this form here the cis the cis form and also the transform the rest of the uh phytochrome is the same it's got three 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 parts right this part here the polypeptide part the middle part and then the tail part okay so the middle part here we call it the chromophore this part here okay if you look at this structure the chromophore so the name is phytochromobilin actually slight mutation can happen okay for for example you know the double bond can happen at different places so this will give rise to different phytochrome so it's pretty much like chlorophyll chlorophyll got a b c d e right phytochrome can happen the same way as well phytochrome a b c and so on all right <clears throat> so the cis and isomer trans isomer just to determine the active and inactive form but the phytochromobilin chan changes it's not it's not depicted here but it can happen will determine the di the difference in this kind of phytochrome okay why why different phytochrome if you remember from this um this earlier slide this slide here phytochromes are present in different organism groups they don't use same phytochrome slight different version of the phytochrome okay so that's why coming back to here yeah okay let's talk very briefly about the um the ratio of the phyto uh pfr so shaded environment have lower red light this thing in a understory of the forest dim light you have less red you have more far red okay so when you have this you will create the plants accordingly some plants are called the sun plant some are called the shape plants how do they know to decide oh now i want to become the sun plant or shape plants because of this pfr ratio to the total phytochrome ratio right <clears throat> so this will be translated to the stem elongation um, as well yeah so this is just to give you some pers perspective usually you are dealing with this ppfd the the amount of photons per unit area even though even though it is super bright, uh, 1900 micromole of photons, that is like almost 12 p.m. Okay, uh, at noon, noon time. <clears throat> Look at this value here. The IV canopy, you know IV, IV plant, compared to the soil. Soil, you would think it's dark right 
it would dark. So you would think that no light and you would be having less of this. But the truth is, look at here. The soil at the depth of 5 mm has more red light compared to the lighting under the IV canopy. Why this is happening? If this was your exam question, which can very be, how do you want to answer it? Why IV canopy have less red light ratio compared to the dark soil at 5 millimeter depth? Why? But as again? Okay, uh, uh, true, true. One of the reason because IV plants already absorb because it too has a phytochrome. Yeah, yeah. Like you got your brothers, right? You got the cake. You want to kill to your brother all the cakes. I finish first, <laughs> right? Okay. So this is the reason. Even though you kind of sow the seeds at the depth, the seeds can still germinate because the red light still present. This is one advantage of having a longer wavelength. Longer wavelength has deeper penetration. That's why. Shorter wavelength cannot uh, dip very, very, very further. This is why in the ocean, we have uh, algal forest. Because red light can penetrate deep in the ocean. Blue light already gone, even at the surface of the ocean water. Because it's a, it's a, it's a shot. Yeah. But the red light, since it can go deeper, the whole forest of the ocean can thrive. You have a kelp, you, you have a coral, and so on. Like the full ocean. I hope you have watched any documentary to see, to imagine how, how uh, intensive is the uh, ocean forest. Okay? It's called um, coral, coral Reef. What's that, Emily? Coral Reef. You know Coral Reef? Oh, yeah, yeah. Terumbu Karam. Coral Reef. Tembu. Tembu. Tem. Tem. Teru. Temu. Terum. Bu. Ka. Ka. Rang. Okay. Right. Okay, um, so the response of phytochrome can be slow or rapid. Um, we're going to see. All right. Um, actually, um, I found this uh, on the some university slide actually, but I, I, I would rather not to use this actually. You can ignore this. Because um, you know what, whatever slides that I've given to you, I, I double check with the original author. Okay, this one I cannot find the, the original source of it. But the concept is um, maybe true. Okay. Phytochrome. Just now you learn about phytochrome promote uh, chlorophyll synthesis. Phytochrome is used to promote um, germination. Phytochrome also responsible for the... Um, that's a word for it. <laughs> you know this? Nikti nasty. Um, Nikti means night. Nasty means uh, to uh, press or hold. So, you know mimosa plant? When you touch it, what happened? What happened to the leaf? Open or close? Okay. So, it was said that um, phytochrome is responsible for that because phytochrome promotes the proton pump ions. Okay. So, because of this rapid ion movement, that's why the leaf can open and close um, rapidly, okay? But for the case of this, um, uh, 
I forgot the name of this. Um, Samania. Sa Samania. Saman. Um, you know Samania, Saman? We have this actually, UPM. If you if you enter the UPM, you have this these three left and right, tall tree. That that tree. Okay. So this tree will close and open the leaf depending on the time of the day. Okay, because it actually reads the phytochrome activity. Active or inactive? Active or inactive. Okay. That's why if you go at night, you see that many leaves actually they close. Okay? They close. Alright? Why why they close? Are they shy? Why? So this is this is what we call as the cicada rhythm. All right. So the, the plants actually take the hint from, from the environment, right? Uh -huh. So here what's happened. Okay. So you have your uh, phytochrome with the presence of red light, it will promote the hydrogen efflux, the movement of hydrogen, and this will cause the potassium channel to open. When when cells is filled with potassium, there is an imbalance of osmoregulation. So water will start to flooding in into the cell to dilute this potassium. Okay? When this happens, the cell will start to swell up, right? When it will start to swell up, it will push left, push right. That's why the leaves start to open. Okay? Like in this case here. So the cells responsible for this is called the Ventral motor cell, motor cell, motor cell, motor cell. Got two ventral front, dorsal back. So this is the cross section of your leaf. Okay, so if this if this was your leaf, this is the base of the leaf, the tip of the leaf. This looking from the front here. Okay, so this is how the leaf know how to open and, and close. Okay, phytochrome for some reason it promotes the um, proton pump activity that gives rise to the activity of the potassium ion, and of course living tissue want to achieve good osmoregulation water coming in plants start to swell and this will open right okay what else can photo phytochrome do uh this is this is interesting but right? it will start to answer remember at the beginning of the phytochrome slide three questions the plants have in mind what what was the first question am i in the light what well, is the second question? Do I have competitors, right? Okay, how do the plants know it has got competitors around it? Can you see? Uh. Yes. By, by perceive the ratio of red to far red. This thing. This thing. This is the... the the key, the plants know, the ratio of red to far red to know whether the competition, the competition is near or far. Okay. So the left, the left, the left seedling, you can see that it has got low density, pretty much solo. Therefore, the lighting situation is more red light or more far red? More red light. Okay. So more red light, <coughs> when it has got more red light, it can grow normally. There is no need to elongate the stem. It just grows normally. When the plant grows normally, it doesn't mean that the stem doesn't grow. It does grow. It grows up and it grows sideways equally. Okay? However, when the competition is closed, Look at what happened. It's so dense. What happened down here? Why, why you have so much uh, far right here? 
Yes, because the surrounding of it have absorbed the red. Right. So what's left now is the forehead. So this forehead actually trigger a cascade of reactions. This is the reaction here. When there is a lot of forehead, okay, I hope you still remember this, this symbol, okay? This symbol, this symbol. This means what? Activate. Yeah, promote, activate, activate. This means what? Inhibit. Inhibit or to stop. Okay, universal. You go to any journal, any school, this is the symbol. Let's see what happened to the farad when it is dominant, meaning that you have more farad now. <clears throat> phytochrome B will start to deactivate it. Remember, there are many phytochrome. For this case, we're dealing with phytochrome B. When phytochrome B is deactivated, a cascade of things will happen as well. For example, this PIF will be inhibited as well. PIF stands for, uh, I forgot, uh, phytochrome interacting factor. Okay, it's a protein. All of this protein. Okay. PIF is actually needed to promote dioxin. All right. So when this, when this thing is not in the picture, cut this. What happened to PIF? PIF will start to become active. When PIF start to active, oxygen will start to become active as well. You know oxygen function? Yes, elongation. Things will start to elongate. Okay? Then you will start to achieve this SAS. A SAS means shade avoidance syndrome. You have a sea of plants, suddenly one plant go up. Very tall compared to other friends. That is a syndrome. We call it SAS. Shade avoiding or avoidance syndromes. Okay? Not only that happening, even the gibberellin will be impacted as well. And gibberellin is actually connected to this DELA. DELA is this uh, transcription um, factor, okay? Uh, this is the growth inhibiting protein, this DELA, okay? So when, when, when DELA is out of the question, because gibberellin is also out of the question, because of phytochrome B is out of the question, PIF will be amplified. Just now, it already grew, it has decided to grow taller. Now, since the DELA is also not in the question, it will become even taller. That's why you get this tall, slender plant, all right? And you get this easily with the um, <coughs> shade plant, okay? Shade plant, shade plant, they, they, they like to grow, to grow taller. Is it not healthy? No, 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 it's, it's still healthy. It, it's, it's just a, a reaction to, to the environment, right? Okay. So, plants have eyes all over its body, right? It sends you. So, now, now that you have known this story, when you go to uh, among the plants in the garden, you, you know that one plant to each other, they are reflecting far red signal, okay? Can you see far red? You can't see, unless you have a special goggles on you. So this forehead will be perceived by the plants and they will decide now what to do, okay? Because growing tall and short is not the only thing they have to worry about. There are some other things as well that you're going to see soon. Okay, so I just put it here to show you the, what happens with the um, ratio of red to far red with the left leaf area index, okay? When do you achieve your higher leaf area index? When red is more or red is less? This axis here is your leaf area index. This axis here is your red to far red ratio. 
when do you have the most leaf area index? Is he alright? When you have Yeah. When you have what? This actually will be will be will will, will be the question soon. No, I'll give you time to for you to figure out what what what's, what's the story here? Because you already know. Um the the the, the ratio between the two will determine Put it this way, <clears throat> red, far red, always present. It's always present. It's, it's just a question of at a certain time of the day, somebody will be slightly lower. Doesn't matter if it, it is higher than the other guy. No, it doesn't have to be that way. It's just slightly higher. It will cause a reaction in the plant, actually. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Oops, sorry. Okay, all right, so this is a bit interesting. Um, what will happen to the response of the plant when phytochrome is also in action? So you can see here, there are a couple of things happening. When you have your, um, far red, you will have a tall plant. No doubt about it, you know why now, okay? Della and also the PIF. But when you give the salt now, it will make it shorter back. So phytochrome kind of interacting with the salt saline condition of the soil. All right. <clears throat> what about the phosphate? Low phosphate, you become a short plant. But low phosphate, then you couple with the forest, you will kill your plant. Right? What else? Drought. It seems like forest makes it worse. All right. What about the flooding? You see it's empty here? There's, there's no level here? Actually, scientists do not know what happened. So this is actually opening for research. What happened when it's flooding and then you give the forest? People do not know. All right? What about the temperature? When it is freezing, you give your forehead, that's actually helping. Your plants will survive. Why? Forehead is heat. Forehead is heat. Okay? So, while the rest of the field is wilting and dying due to the freezing condition, your plants being treated with forehead will actually become happy. Okay, but what happened at the higher temperature, tropical condition? Far right, when you give, your plant's not going to die, it just becomes taller. You see? Two different situations when you play around with the temperature. Phytochrome, always there. Then come along all these second factors. I hope you know what second factor is. You do your ANOVA and everything, right? Okay. Yeah. What about pathogen attack? Hmm. So you have VOC, your volatile, volatile organic compounds, and then you have your pathogen attack, you have your herbivory chewing attacks. Low red to far red, meaning that high, high far red, right? Will it make things worse or otherwise? Yes, it makes it worse. So maybe it's some, some idea to you. Maybe to improve plant immunity, you need to give a bit more of this. Red light. Is it true or not? And there is that, that um, anybody go to salon, uh, beauty, color? Why? No point. <laughs> you know, in this, in this beauty parlor this day, they, they give you this thing. <clears throat> Uh -huh. Red light therapy. Okay. Um, you don't. You know, some ladies go to to do the face thing, right? 
So now, in, 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 because the beautician is just too lazy because they want to gossip, they just take the, the, the mask, like, like a plastic mask, they can put it and turn on the light. That is the red light. Because that kind of improve the growth and also to strengthen all the collagen in the face. Okay? Maybe some of you are not familiar with it. I'll just show very quickly. <coughs> Start shopping. Ah, this thing. So, um, you know, the things women would do for beauty, right? Why? Why, why? why are they giving all this red light? Why is it? Do not forget, we have light sensor as well. We have photo receptor as well. So apparently, in, in our cell, red light kind of trigger um, growth and also cell cycle. Okay? So after some time giving this red light situation uh, condition, even 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 to the body, right? Light therapy. Yeah, people just yeah look look at that. Definitely, she got a, a channel on YouTube. <clears throat> it just makes you healthier, and this has been proven scientifically. Okay, even the athletes are using this. Okay, so you can see the 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 virtue of red light. Okay, so this is why when you go to here, you can see that, oh, maybe if you increase the red light ratio, the plants will become healthier. This regular condition, more red light. That's why it becomes less severe. Okay, so the virtue of plant spacing. If you grow your plants too close, you are jeopardizing of having less red light. Your plants is actually weak. In immunity right so allow your plants to have proper lighting okay so this is our, all the summary of the possible red light and also the SAS the shade avoidance syndrome okay when it is reacting with other environmental factors like PI PI it does not pi okay PI stands for inorganic phosphate okay uh, nodulation, high temperature, salinity, flood, see? flooding. Nobody knows. Actually, if you want to do research, this is you can go down this road. A lot not known. Okay. Um, freezing tolerance and also drought drought tolerance. Okay. Yeah. Not only that, this also this red light far red um, ratio kind of give our tropical forest identity. You see our tropical forest, it has got these layers, right? This understory layer, is it empty? Hmm. Do you watch Harry Potter? Um, you, know, you know Harry Potter and what's it, the name of the friend, the red hair friend? Ronald Weasley. That Ronald Weasley, the first Harry Potter, oh, Harry Potter is more uh, uh, white awake, right? <clears throat> they, 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 they ran into the death forest, right? I want you to look at the forest. What do you find at the understory of the forest? Is it clear or is it full with vegetation? Clear. Clear, right? Is it similar or different than our forest? Different. Okay. The that is called the, the forest in Harry Potter, it's called Boreal Forest. Boreal Forest. Boreal means northern. Like um, Aurora Borealis. You know Aurora? <clears throat> so this understory condition in our country tropical country coupled with high humidity and warm temperature it gives life in the understory 
not like the boreal forest in Harry Potter, pretty much empty. You only found, what do you found here? In, in that tree and dying Voldemort. <laughs> yeah. Searching, lurking for unicorn to make a snack out of it. Right. So this understory is not that for tropical plant, uh, uh, forest. It's filled with different kind of plants, you know, crawling plants and so on, and also for the fauna. Teeming with flora and fauna. Teeming, filled with flora and fauna. This is the word, teeming. Teeming. Teeming with life. So, our warm, moist situation has given rise to this, which is not present in other forests in, in, in other parts of the world. Okay, that's why our forests look so busy, right? You, you, you got forest, you got jungle, you got snake, millipede, mosquito, tiger, all coming. Okay, all because this far red interacting with warm and moist situation it gives rise to life right so don't think of no I, I want to take the negative connotation out of your head just now you see that oh far red whenever it's around something bad happened to the plant not really not necessarily okay it depends on far red interacting with what if far red in, interacting with phosphate of course, your plant is going to die. Far red interacting with salt, your plant is going to die. But far red interacting with temperature and moisture like this, you're going to get life. Okay? So this is all about the, the activity in science. You need to know what to combine with so that your organism can achieve what you want it to be. All right? Kind of like a hologram. All right? Okay, and finally, the last question of the plant. What was the last question? The plant asked. First question, am I in the light? Second question, do I have competitors? Second, third question? When is it time to flower? Yay. Okay, when? Today. <laughs> okay, very quickly. So, um, due to the phytochrome as well, okay? <clears throat> so, you have your sunlight, mostly red. I hope you can see the difference in the color. Right. Uh, mostly red, a little far red. Why? I might ask this in the exam. Why? Why sunlight coming to the earth, you have a little far red? Ozone, ozone absorb UV. CO2 and water vapor absorb, all right, heat, okay? That's why CO2 is also regarded as a greenhouse gas. That's why, water vapor as well. Water vapor absorb heat. So whatever that you receive on the Earth's surface, more red light compared to far red. Okay, so in sunlight, most uh, phytochrome gets converted to PFR form, okay? So, during the day, this is what you get, this side of it, that it becomes PFR, 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 the active form of the phytochrome. Then it comes the night, you're coming back this side, okay? Now, most will start to change, okay, in the dark. Gradually, from PFR to PR4, from this, change to this. It will change. What is the name of the process of changing? Isomerization. Good. Okay. After a short night, much of PFR still left. Is it all gone? No. So this is what I wanted to correct your understanding. It is still there, but very less. Okay. Always there. Some amount of it always there. Even though it's a complete darkness, some amount of active phytochrome PFR are still present in the cell, okay? It's never really gone. Okay, so this, this is how the plants perceive the long day, the short day, okay? So it's the condition of 
Um, cumulatively, how much does it receive? <coughs> okay, look at this, the, the bottom plant here, the long day plant here. 12 hours is the critical dark period whether the plant decides to um, flower or otherwise, okay? Continuous more than 12 hours is going to flower. Less than 12 hours is not going to flower. Less than 12 hours, but sometime during the night, you give red light, it will flower. Yeah. Okay. And then another situation, less than 12 hour day, but at night, you suddenly, you give your far red, it's not going to flower. Okay. Then another experiment, you give more red, a bit more than the far red, it's going to flower anyway. Okay. And eventually, if you use, you give the same amount of red for red, red for red, red for red, it's not going to flower. So, whatever it is, the red, the last, the last red that it received will determine, okay, I'm going to, because the plant got memory. Okay, this is, this is how. How, it, how does it store the memory? Using USB. This, the ratio of this, the ratio of this. The ratio of PR to PFR. So the ratio of this is the plant's memory. How much light have I received? It's not like your plant got a timer. You've got your phone, right? Set a timer. Press a timer on your phone. Okay. All right. Oh, sorry. Okay. So this is just a repeat of that. So after a long night, this is for the uh, winter time, okay? So PFR is pretty much gone. Then it becomes the dawn, you will get the active form again. So it kind of isomerizes all day long. Doesn't it, doesn't it get tired? Doesn't it get tired? Actually, the, the phytochrom kind of stable. It doesn't have to, 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 you know, break down and make a new one. Because the part that change it become active or non-active, or oh, I've, I've, I've rubbed this, is the um, one side of the phytochrome, the cis and trans side of it, not the rest of the phytochrome. Okay, the phytochrome look like a big balloon, right? Not the whole balloon has to change, just the tip of the balloon. Okay, that's why it can change and unchange all the time. <clears throat> all right. So when you know this, you can utilize it for the short day plant, okay? So you can trick the short day plant into flowering with a brief of flash red light, okay? You, you, you are running your horticulture business, okay? When you don't want, when the order is not in, you just grow your uh, chrysanthemum like usual, okay? And, okay, one day suddenly, Go Chok Tong family, somebody died. They, they want two tons flower, right? So you turn on your red light, give a flash, very soon the chrysanthemum will start to flower. Okay? And very useful in horticulture industry because you can control your supply. If you cannot control your supply, it will have impact on the economy and industry. There's a lot of it. What happened to the pricing? You have loads of your supply. Yeah, you're going to crash the price, okay? Crash the price, what happened to the farmers? Yeah, very, very little, very little income, okay? Happy, unhappy? <laughs> All right, okay. All right, this is just a, just a summary of it. Uh, short day um, and uh, the long day uh, story. All right, okay, this is a video actually. You want to see a video? Yes. Because you have had enough of me, right? Okay, let's see. Uh, uh, can you shut the light for a bit? Let's. And bring, can you bring down the um, blinds? This and the second one. Pull, pull the blind. Pull the blind so that uh, you can see clearly. Um. Uh, 
I hope the internet is okay. okay. Oops. Oh, no, no. Wrong browser. Oh, my mind. This browser doesn't have the graphic installed to it. Uh, I'll turn on the caption, okay, so that you can um, enjoy the. Have it done up. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. You can wash on your own, okay? I want to show this, but this is four minutes. Oh. You want to watch this? Yes. Anybody do not want to watch? No? Don't want to watch? Don't want? Yes or, yes or no? Yes. It's, it's four minutes, but it's fine, okay?
The binary allocation of the loops will typically be the white LED being 3,000 K instead of 4,000 K or higher. I prefer this card temperature to be clear with the amount of red light that both lights produce. However, this does not mean that using a 4 or 5,000 K white LED would produce any less plant mass. The first thing I looked at was leaf tip burn. Both sets of plants showed minor leaf tip burn, but throughout the test, the plants under the red blue light have just slightly more, but not enough to be of concern. Looking at the roots, all the plants were showing healthy growth, but the roots of the plants under the red blue light were slightly smaller than mass. The next thing I noticed was that the plants under the red blue light, compared to the plants under the white light, had a slightly darker color of green. This appears to be, in my opinion, a healthier production of chlorophyll in the leaves, but there is likely a better scientific answer to that, so please leave a comment if you feel differently. Now getting to the most important piece of information, the weight. I weight each plant to take an average and a total. The average weight of the plants are the white light was 118 grams, with the total was 473 grams. The red blue light produced an average of 86 grams per plant, with a total of 347 grams. So the white LED produced roughly 37% more plant mass than the plants under the red blue light. Now for those of you out there wondering if they tasted any different, yes they did. I can't really say what a normal taste would be. But I can say that the plants under the red blue light tasted slightly bitter compared to the rest. Even parts that were more pale in color still had that slightly bitter taste. So now as I conclude this video, I will leave you with this. There are pros and cons to using a tuned spectrum light such as the red blue light in this video. This does not conclude that a tuned spectrum light is good or bad. Different plants and different growth phases play a large role in how the light is tuned. So if you take anything away from this, in my opinion, for the hobbyist, White light is an easy fail safe choice. And in order to figure that out, I didn't build plants in this video. I grew answers. So thanks for watching, and hope to see you in episode two. Alright. I'll turn on the back. a good amount of red light okay because red light will pair up these responses with other factors surrounding the plants all right okay uh, so for the second video actually so which, which one is better the the white led or the color led why why is it good yeah so in, in many aspects, the white white LED means full spectrum. Okay, it's good because of the higher biomass, good tasting, and so on. But like you guys just said just now, the the color of the red blue, the 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 vegetable look greener, right? Darker the green. It means what? The chlorophyll is more okay so usually when the chlorophyll is more usually the plants have more nutrients in it okay it's true that it has less biomass and more bitter but in terms of nutritionally speaking it is more nutritious for you to eat all right maybe this is not very good for vegetable production because nobody wants to buy your vegetable because it's just it doesn't taste delicious but what about in uh, pharmaceutical industry in pharmaceutical industry you are after the active ingredients in the plants right the, the, the phytometabolites in plants okay so it doesn't matter whether whether it is good or not you want the active compounds so when the situation is changed 
would you rather to grow in the white light or the blue red light? Blue red. Mm. Right. Okay. So is, this is this is why it is important to understand about the light because it gives you power to decide. It gives you power to advise accordingly what kind of lighting should be given. Fertilizer, water, that kind of default. Your plants, your crops going to get that anyway. Okay? But when you play around with the lighting, there is more that can come up from your agricultural produce. If you are target for the market, supermarket, you know, the larger population, go with the biomass. Okay? Because people are hungry. Hungry people are unhappy people. Right? Okay? But when you want to go towards the uh, biopharmaceutical active ingredients to make medicines, supplements and so on, you go to making the plants producing more active compounds. Right? Just by changing the light. Is the water changing? No. Fertilizer changing? No. You see? All the same. You just change the light. Alright? And all thanks to Phytopro and some other uh, let low <laughs> <laughs> and some other photo receptor with that we will have a look at in, in the coming lessons, okay? Uh, Alright, okay, we'll go. <laughs> Interesting story? Interesting? Okay, good. Alright, okay, I think that's all for today. Um, what's our name? I need, I need to slow down because I have uh, more work after this. I need, I, need, I need to write. Do I need to write? <laughs> I need to write. I need to write. Okay, um, any question? Any question? Yes. Yes. Like just now you mentioned that some seeds need uh, light to germinate. Mm -hmm. Like other seeds do not need the sunlight to germinate. How do they work? Do have to absorb energy from? Uh, germination requires water. That is the basic premise. Yeah. Because water is the one that will uh, trigger metabolic process in, in the seeds to awaken the environment and so on. However, some species they require light to wake up certain genes. Yeah. When these certain genes do not awaken, even though they have water, they cannot go further. Mm -hmm. Yeah, alright? So this is the case of the letter seeds. You have to give us the water. Oh, that's good. Uh, the embryo has awakened now. However, certain genes, like the chlorophyll genes, are not awakened and so on. So they kind of like, I have to wake up, but the rest of the time is still asleep. Mm -hmm. I cannot go to place. Mm -hmm. Right, no. Who's going to open the door for me? Right. Okay, so this is species dependent. Alright? Some seeds they do not need light at all. Like Kukwa. Two thousand years in the soil, in the pond, sleep there. Nobody nobody disturbed. Yeah. But if suddenly you, you take it out, it can just grow easily. Right? Yeah. Right. It depends on the species. Alright? Okay. Okay. Yes. Why some farmers, I mean, in the conversion of the food, they cover it up in plastic. Cover it up. Okay, that is to increase uh, RH moisture. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it's not to, to, um, that's actually to prevent desiccation. Prevent desiccation. Yeah. No. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, because the tip of the of the cotyledon is kind of fragile, if it suddenly receives um, the regular environment, the scorching environment, it can burn. Ooh. Yeah. So you want the seeds to receive moisture at the fullest capacity. That's why some some farmers cover it with plastic to increase the humidity. Mm. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Question, question, question. You want test? You want the first test? No. Okay, alright. I'm thinking maybe your first test, um, we can turn it into some kind of uh, assignment. Uh, 
You already have your first assignment, right? The calcium and ROS assignment. Um, maybe take one assignment from today. If you uh, turn on the book, uh, this I'll just open here. So, um, for, for this Python Pro, I would like the one group. I okay. I have not. I I have not decided. That actually, the the way you can present your um, assignment, it doesn't have to be in the form of slide. You can make an um, um, ebook. You can make poster. You can make infographic. It's up to you. It's up to you. Okay. Uh, so for for this assignment, very short assignment. Um, that's gonna be forever. One moment. One moment. So your first test will come from S3 assignments, okay? So do it nicely, um, so that you can go. Uh, it's very easy to get full mark with my class, okay? I cannot only help you with final, okay? So it's possible for you to get full marks before final, alright? Just, just do the, the assignment. Alright, um, so... Okay. Okay, I would like to open this. So, the uh, one row, take the five form responses. <laughs> I want to do this. Tell me more about five row responses. This is Tell me more about it. Okay, read about it. And let's share the information. You have known about the photo now. Okay, now it's about the the amount of light given to the phytochromes. Okay. So actually the concept is your phytochrome needs to receive the right amount of period and amount for it to do any real responses and that actually depends on the plant as well All right okay and the second one is phytochrome signaling 
What difference is the name? That should be this signaling pathway. Okay. So upon signaling uh, signaling pathway, um, what 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 does phytochrome does? Actually, to some degree, you have seen it in the slides. Okay. So things like the um, uh, it regulates membrane potential. Uh, it regulates transcription factor. What's this one? Yeah, and this PIF. Yeah. Yeah. So you can find everything within this book, the, the, the two pages for, for both topics. You just need you need to read two or three pages of it, okay? So the first one, the political response, that would be page 457. Yeah. 457, 459 For this 460 to 462 Okay? Okay, so who wants the first topic? Nobody <laughs> is that is that right? Wait, is that? On what? Which one do you want? First or second? Number two! Jump over to what? Or on what? So to what you look at this, okay? Okay. That's life. You, 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 you slow? Bye. Alright, okay, that's all for today. Alright, so I'll see you later. So, no class on Monday because uh, Sultan wants to throw a big party throughout the state. Yeah. from supermarket Tesco lockers how they promote their contents right okay all right understood yeah. all good all good okay I'll see you uh, next Thursday all right okay